Hey everyone, this is Nick Mirabertis teaching you financial modeling. Today, we're going to be learning about data pipelines for financial modeling. This is part of our introduction to the advanced financial modeling with Python course. So, data pipelines, uh, basically we can think of a data pipeline as what gets the data in your model. Your model has all the logic on the inside, but you still need the inputs into the model, the data, in order to get some kind of conclusion out of the model. Um, and so sometimes your model is very hypothetical and you're just putting uh, inputs in and then you don't really need a data pipeline. But sometimes you are pulling in uh, financial data, um, stock prices, uh, you know, other other sources of data, um, and you need to process them. Uh, maybe you need to put different sources together. Maybe you need to clean things up. Maybe um, you need to aggregate things in some way um, in order to actually work with your model. And uh, the data pipeline is there, whether you automate it or not. Uh, you can do a manual data pipeline, um, but there are definitely advantages to automating it. Um, so we, we think about generally two main uh, sections of a data pipeline. One is the collection of the data. How do you get it in the first place? And the other is uh, what we call wrangling the data, which is a process of cleaning the data up and uh, reformatting it in such a way that it's ready to be used by your model. <clears throat> so <clears throat> again, you can do all this manually. Um, <clears throat> and that's what a lot of people are doing, especially with Excel uh, models. Um, but you can <clears throat> save yourself a lot of time by automating these steps. Um, but you do have to consider how this model is being used. If you're you know, using this model to generate a report every single week, and every week there's 30 minutes of manual work to, to do this data pipeline to go get the data that you need and then uh, put things together and modify it in a way that's ready for your model, you're spending a half an hour every week doing this, um, well, maybe it makes sense to automate that. You know, maybe spend a few hours one time to automate it, and the uh, results of that are going to pay off over time because then you're not spending that 30 minutes every week. You put the cost in one time to automate it, and then it just goes and it runs on its own. You click the button, and you've got the report. You don't have to worry about the data. Um, but... Uh, you know, if this is a model you're just going to use one time or you're not rerunning it very often, then maybe it doesn't make sense to go through and automate all this. I mean, if you want to do it for a learning exercise, sure, go ahead. But ultimately, the main, the main thing with the automation here is you're trying to save time. And so if you're going to spend way longer automating it than just doing it manually, then probably just do it manually. But there are other advantages to the automated approach beyond just saving time. Uh, one is that uh, you are going to eliminate the possibility for human error. Um, you know, as long as you write the code correctly, then it's going to do the exact same thing with your data every time. Um, and so you're not gonna have to worry about accidentally missing a step in your process or uh, you know, handling one one row of the data accidentally differently than all the others, or or something like that, which could cause a mistake in your your model and and the report from your model. Um, so if it's all automated, you're gonna expect to get the same results every time. And another uh, good advantage is that it can open up new possibilities, because maybe you know you are running this report every week and. Um, you know, everyone only considered ever doing it weekly because it does take 30 minutes of manual effort to put it together. But now that you cl click a button and you get the report, 
Well, maybe you just set that up on a schedule and now every hour that report is generated and everyone always has the most timely information possible. Um, and nobody would have ever have dreamed of doing that before because, you know, basically it would become someone's full-time job to keep generating that report. And now it's just automated. It happens automatically in the background. Um, so there's a lot of value in uh, automating your data pipeline. But again, it, it, there's trade-offs. And if you're going to spend 10 hours to automate, to save, you know, five minutes that you're going to do a few times, it probably doesn't make sense. So looking at the data collection side, um, we can get data into our models from a number of different ways. Usually, you're going to be accessing the internet in some way to get the data, uh, whether that's from a website or it's from a you know, shared server where someone has an Excel file, or it's from a database or from an API. Um, you know, all these are ultimately going over the internet at some point to get the data. Um, and when we think about data, which is on um, websites, um, if you can manually get that data somehow through a website, then you can automate that process via web scraping. Um, so whether that's you know going to some site and downloading some file, or it's actually you know there's a table on some site and you want to extract the data from that table, um, or even just you know a random piece of information on a web page. And you want to, um, you know, look at 3,000 different of these similar web pages and get that same information out of each one. You can do all these things with web scraping. Um, so it doesn't even have to be structured. Um, you know, you could um, go to say Yahoo Finance and just grab some of the key statistics and then uh, do it for every every company that Yahoo Finance has and have thousands and thousands of companies in your data set all through this web scraping process. Um, though I'm not gonna endorse specifically using Yahoo Finance, they do have uh, terms of service against this, um, but I'm just giving that as a possible example. Um, another source of common source of data is through APIs. So there you send a web request to the API and it responds with the data, uh, usually in either a JSON or an XML format. Uh, and then you can bring that into your model. Um, and for um, both web scraping and for accessing APIs, you can use the request package in Python. It's an easy way to send web requests. Um, so if you have a website that's very simple, it doesn't uh, use JavaScript in order to, to load and display the data, then request is a good fit in order to uh, get that web page and extract the information. And if it's a site that um, does use a lot of JavaScript to display the data, or um, you just really prefer to work uh, with a browser instead of like the command line interface, Selenium is a package which is useful for that because um, it actually drives a web browser. So you can have Chrome or Firefox just up on the screen and you run some code and you see uh, that the page is changing in Firefox or you're pulling information out Etc. And so it's a nice like kind of visual way to go through it. You can actually see what happens in the browser as you run the code. Um, and then databases are another general way that you're going to get information into your model. Um, and typically SQL databases are the most common um, business databases out there. Um, sometimes it's NoSQL databases and there are um, packages which help work with those as well. Depends on which database, um, but SQL is more general, uh, more common, and uh, you can use the same approaches regardless of what type of SQL database it is. Um, 
So you're, you're not going to get 100% away from SQL. Like SQL is um, a, a query language that lets you write these queries, which are going to extract information from a database um, or update the database and things like that. Um, so you are still going to have to know a little bit of SQL or at least understand the basics. Um, but Python can help you um, work with these SQL databases such that you don't actually have to write SQL code. Uh, you can use Python. Um, you can use SQL Alchemy, which lets you create SQL queries with Python code. Um, and Pandas also has a read SQL function. Um, so if you just want to bring in one database table and bring it into your model, then Pandas is going to be a good approach for that. You can just read it in. Uh, and if you need to do more complex queries across multiple tables and things like that, then SQL Alchemy can be a good choice to help you with that. Also, if you um, need to take the result of your model and store it into a database, then uh, SQL Alchemy is also uh, more helpful for that than Pandas. Um, so that's the data cleaning side and then looking at the data wrangling side of data pipelines. So we have already worked with Pandas in the first course, and that is going to be your best general purpose uh, package to use for wrangling data because you can do so many different manipulations of the data with it. Um, so that's kind of the gold standard in Python for wrangling data. Uh, but we didn't cover it in the necessary detail to cover uh, you know, everything that you would expect to run into in data cleaning. Um, so I'll give some resources on where you can learn more about Pandas to cover all these cases. Some of the main areas we didn't cover but are useful for this are, um, we covered a little bit on selecting data, but you know, more advanced um, selecting of data merging different data sets together, um, grouping and doing aggregations within those groups. Like, you know, maybe you have sales for each, uh, you know, store in your company and you want to get sales by region. So group by the region and, and some across the stores, um, and, uh, reshaping the data in different ways. And that includes, uh, resampling if uh, you have some time series and you need to change the frequency of the time series. Um, so the reason this is not called just data cleaning is because cleaning generally refers to, well, you know, if there's missing values in there you need to remove, or there's, uh, you know, invalid data in there, like errors, or there's other outliers you want to remove. That part is generally referred to as cleaning. Um, whereas there's the other side, which is you might have perfectly clean data, but it's still not in the structure that you need for your model. Um, so then this kind of reformatting of the data, um, by combining it with other data, aggregating, um, selecting different parts of it, etc. Um, that's kind of the data reformatting side of things and together they make up the data wrangling. Uh, one other thing I just want to mention in here that helps with the uh, data cleaning side of things uh, is regular expressions. So regular expressions are actually their own kind of mini programming language on their own. Uh, it's act they're actually supported in a lot of different programming languages with the same syntax. Um, and they're ways of matching different strings and extracting parts out of those strings. So especially um, in the context of web scraping, where you're just pulling in, uh, you know, a big HTML file and you want to extract certain parts of it, these are really useful. Um, and also sometimes you just get, um, you know, choose in your data, um, which this can help with, like, um, you know, maybe there's uh, a percent sign on the end, you got to remove that and then, um, you know, convert it. 
into decimal. Um, so this can help with things like that. And so I'm um, giving you a number of different resources here to um, help you learn these topics in the meantime until I'm able to post additional lectures on uh, focusing on these topics. So um, he, the, here's a couple of resources which are related to the web scraping with the browser. Um, so just an introduction to Selenium. Um, and then there's this other Python package called Helium which uh, makes it a little bit easier to use Selenium. So I would kind of look at the first one just to get an understanding of what all this is and then look at the second for maybe an easier way to do it. Um, and then also looking at um, requests, which, which helps you with this kind of more basic web scraping as well as accessing APIs. Um, and a couple uh, resources on Pandas. So um, the introduction to Pandas, which uh, has a lot of stuff we've already covered with Pandas, but also gives quick intros on the remaining topics. And then, uh, you know, the full um, uh, cookbook in Pandas, which gives you strategies for, for a bunch of more um, advanced uh, data pipeline related tasks. Um, couple resources on regular expressions. Um, I think it's useful to go through an intro to just to understand them. Um, but then uh, they are somewhat complicated. I myself even generally pull up the reference when I write regular expressions. So it's nice to have that. Um, and then uh, a few resources on SQL Alchemy. I'm giving an overview um as uh you know getting started with it and then the um full documentation as well so that covers um an introduction to data pipelines in financial models and i hope in the future to release uh more dedicated um videos on um both uh data collection and uh, wrangling and looking at web scraping and all of these more individual topics. Um, but you have these resources to go off of in the meantime. So thanks for listening and see you next time.